Gosh. Hey, Luke. How you doing, man? Not too bad. Long time no see. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see you again, man. You too. So, how, have, uh, how have things been for you? Oh, yeah, you know, it's all right, man. Waiting for this uh, hysteria to calm down a little bit. I think it's coming to an end. I, yeah. I've been waiting patiently, but my patience is wearing thin. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like I'm at it. I'm 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 pretty much done with this whole thing. Can can we finish up, please? Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's been a tumultuous time. Yeah, with all the uncertainty. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to create some certainty here, here today. I think. I hope so. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. So we got a couple ideas. You know, we always kind of hit on some sort of like philosophical kind of overarching patterns of things and we're going to try today i think to delve in a little bit and create a little bit of clarity on things if we can if, if we yeah. if we can the attempt won't be in vain right right like if we can be so bold as to try to t attempt <laughs> but i think actually these days you know, it's such a good thing to really, for anyone to get together and try to create some clarity because we live in an era of absolute blurriness, absolute yeah. hysteria and total ungrounded um, insanity. So I think it's so important to try to do these things. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think just to touch on that, the ungrounded hysteria. Mm. I mean, there's so much um, underlying these, well, I mean, they stem from societal, psychological, even philosophical uh, ideations and promulgations. And mm. I think one of the biggest things that's so prominent with that hysteria is, uh, well, it's the, I think it's starting at a young age, mm. and I think that a lot of it stems from not being integrated or assimilated adequately at a young age, and so now it's playing out. Mm. When oh, th older. that's a good point, man. Th that's a good point. Yeah, let's actually let's actually just uh, go with that for a minute because that's really that reminds me of this uh, really great African proverb. Uh, this is particularly for young men. It says, um, you know, if the young men are not initiated into the tribe, mm -hmm. they'll burn the whole village down just to feel the heat. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's, um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's deadly serious. Mm. And I think there's this certain hellish, travesty or catastrophe that emerges mm. in the face of well adequate assimilation i guess mm. is what i would mm. call it you know obviously from the child developmentalist perspective you know that they, they've mapped it you know piaget's map these things um but you know i i can't remember off the top of my head what he just coined them but essentially you know, from, you know, two to four and then four to seven, mm. you've got that gray area where it's absolutely imperative that your child is, you know, socialized. Mm. And uh, because that opens up all of the characteristics of the personality, mm. it allows them to explore themselves, explore other people and how they interact with the world. Mm. And other than that, when they don't get that sufficiently, mm. and they start to become, in most cases, uh, introverted severely, mm. which, you know, in, in a sense becomes dismal, mm. uh, can be melancholic, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, things often take a turn for the worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we're getting like a, a fundamental degradation yeah. of of the individual you know the 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 individual is becoming degraded and handing that on to the next generation and we're just getting yes. a diluted and diluted 
genetic pool of of yeah. candidates and the the actual species is becoming more just less well developed yeah oh definitely uh and obviously the technolo technological revolution or mm. evolution whatever mm. plays a vast part in that mm. and uh, i think it's not See, I would never forsake technology. Mm. But, uh, to the to some degree, I forsake how it's handled. Mm. Um, mm. I think we've done a poor job of moderating it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, do I like? I didn't have a cell phone when I was, you know, fourteen. Right. Right. I don't think I had a cell phone until I was maybe 17. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but that being said, I get to go and play outside. Yeah. And be, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. And, and be, yeah. we're being like, uh, like, like symbiotically attached to these technological organisms almost at such right. an early age and we don't understand how that's really going to impact the evolution of our species because it's just new it's all so new well and it's constantly new you, mm. you can't keep up with it mm. and i think that that's slightly denigrating and um you know to sort of interweave some of the things we want to mm -hmm. talk about yeah. a little bit is if fundamentally we're these uh, type of beings, um, we can't really conquer this new uh, wave of technology. Mm. Mm. Because we can't even conquer ourselves. That's it. That's yeah. Well, and I think the further we delve into this almost metaphysical substrate to, i mean to some degree mm. we further lose touch and denigrate the proclivity to invest in the self yeah yeah um and and to bring it back to uh you know inculcating or um, um disseminating into your you know societal mm conscious uh, not conscious <laughs> perspective mm. um i think there's something in that as well that's again starting at a young age mm. so whereas a lot of people our age are sort of being introduced to this stuff and we've but we've also lived mm. life a bit differently yeah they're growing up with it and so that proclivity again to invest in the self and yeah it's just sort of being dispense with. yeah yeah that's true they they don't even see like the value in developing themselves and it's really disturbing when you see younger people like throwing their their person their self away mm -hmm. and and selling it off for more yeah. access to, to fucking Snapchat and just for yeah. more instant gratification on Instagram. Yeah. They just uh, hand over all their personal sovereignty to their emotions, to their yeah. attention, to their mind. And what yeah. they're getting in return is so insignificant. It's so useless. Yeah, it's it's infinitesimal. Oh, yeah. It's they pathetic, obtain. yeah. Well, and I mean, when I look at this situation i i mean i don't want to be flippant and uh misconstrue the the very uh, prominent and uh, vast hypothalamic functions of the brain that control the dopaminergic release mm. uh because dopamine is such a, a powerful factor mm. in expediency mm. it, it creates short sighted um, and like say so they don't uh, you know they forego all these pleasurable 
and, and expedient things. Mm. And that's because of the dopaminergic circuit yeah. to some degree. Mm. And they get a kick mm. of dopamine and they get a surplus of it. But then when it can't secrete, it can't match that same high, mm. they crave more. Mm. And so, of course, they're going to invest in their, you know, Snapchat mm. and Instagram mm. and whatever else made them feel good. Mm. But mm. they'll never get that novelty again. Never. So it's such a shallow oh, yeah. uh, direction to go. Yeah, it's so disempowering. Yeah. And and the, the, the odd thing is that, uh, you know, they don't even seem to to realize what they're doing it's like if you're addicted to heroin for the most part like you know you're addicted to heroin like it's pretty obvious you're fully aware you're a junkie you know you you have a real real fucking heroin problem you know it's like there's (laughs) there's very few heroin addicts who are like who are like no no i'm not i'm not a heroin addict it's no no way it's it's just a i just do it once in a while it's a good thing I'm a I'm a social addict. social heroin user. In fact, I it's a really good part of my life. No, like they all know. Whereas these people who are just absolutely addicted to to technology and their phones, yeah. they seem to think it's good. They actually like think what they're doing is is useful. That's true. They, I mean, d- there is a, a disparity between. Or, or even a dichotomy, I suppose, this mm. two-fold dilemma that sort of emerges, right? Mm. I mean, with technology, mm. we're allowed to uh, reach out and advocate and uh, we can espouse or exude, depending mm. on what approach you're taking, your ideas. Mm. And it's wonderful. If you're using the format and the social media in, a, I think, a provocative way, mm. but also in a way that instantiates some profundity, you know, mm. there has to be some, I think, if you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, what do they call those uh, people? Uh, an like influencer. Influencer, yeah. Yeah. If you're one of those influencers, I think you have a responsibility to have to share information worth sharing. Mm. And I mean real information worth sharing, mm. not make up trial videos and stuff like that. Because we have access to millions of people. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. But the disparity, right? Where I where you're saying, yeah, so these people think that they're doing good by posting selfies and, yeah. and sort of being vain and I think contemptuous mm. and, and abysmal to some degree mm. because it breeds or sows the seed for this um, uh, narcissistic hegemony. Yeah. You know, that's the law, that's the rule. Mm. And it's, well, Again, this is where some people, I think, mistreat the idea of us being societal beings. Mm. I think what they take, they take something like this, this model, and they're thinking, okay, well, societies shape this. And so in a, as a consequence of that, that means that this is society's fault. And when they come out on the other side of this, um, cloud (laughs) you know this unscrupulous and nihilistic place they're like oh it's just society's fault Mm. so yeah they're they're making poor decisions Mm. they're so perturbed and disconcerted what everyone else thinks Mm. they're shallow they have no psychological or uh, you know personality representation of themselves truly Mm -hmm. And then they blame, well, for all intents and purposes, they blame God. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. If you if you take away, if you strip away the, the fundaments and the context of yeah. the vernacular of yeah, today, yeah. they blame God. Yeah. 
and then uh, they proverbially submit or you know sort of capitulate their soul to something. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's inferior. yeah, that's a good point because it's it's weird too. Like when you see people just always giving over their authority to Snapchat and Twitter and just what someone else thinks on on Instagram. They're they, what they're really doing is like they're like denying the authority of God, mm-hmm. and they're sort of like they're they're like refocusing their attention and making God out of these fucking people on Snapchat and with the next TikTok fucking dance, and they're like they're using that as a surrogate for God, but the problem is it's not nourishing. It doesn't no. sna- Snapchat doesn't nourish your soul like communion with God does. And so that you've right. got this like endlessly lost generation, this endlessly lost species of people that cannot find their way and, and cannot get a footing on reality. Yes. Well, and see now I, I recently read something. Uh, can't I think it may have been, in 12, 12 rules for life, of, you know, I, I was rereading it. Yeah. And it was something along the lines of uh, if you outright refuse or, or are incapable, say inhibited, it's, maybe it's an apprehension or you forebode it mm. because it's, it's this harrowing thing to reveal yourself to others, mm. right? So if you, if you cannot reveal yourself to others, um, you cannot reveal yourself to yourself. Mm. And and I thought about that for a second because, I mean, if I couldn't be open and honest with you mm. in a conversation about me, mm. why should I be any less certain or any more certain, say, that I'm going to be open and honest with myself about myself? Mm. And, mm. and I think... If we, you know, disseminated or or shattered the multivalent layers of the, you know, the borders surrounding this, and we actually had a moment to convolute and extrapolate with these individuals, we would probably see that they're not actually revealing themselves. Yeah. It's a facade. It's a facade, a persona. Yeah. yeah. Right, and it's multivalent. It has so many mm. layers, and underneath of it is this wretched, mm. dismal, yeah. a a boring, yeah, because yeah. they keep compiling falsity. Yeah. yeah, that that is the truth right there. It's it's this, it's this, it's this like disguise built upon. A disguise built upon like a lie, built upon an exaggeration, and we we just keep these people just keep producing an image that they think will sell to others, and it just gets further and further away from who they really are, and they themselves become lost, and then the people who consume that image become lost because they confuse what reality even is. And they compare right. that to who they are, and it's just this total clusterfuck. And you're yeah. you're well, see, you're seeing that, man. You're seeing that now in the mainstream society. You see that in the fucking politi- politics. You yeah. see it with all this insane shit spilling into the streets, and these completely yeah. fucked narratives that go on in in mainstream society. It's just common sense that this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, too, I I think. There's an, a, a modicum uh, or inkling of uh, you know this detriment mm. to individuals that makes them uh, irredeemably corrupt mm. to some degree, and it provides them with a it, you know pr- provides a frame uh, limiting uncertainty in the forefront of confronting the truth Mm. because I, you know, the truth can be this ambivalent 
sort of, you know, it, it's enmity, right? It, it has, it's a duality. It's got two aspects. The truth is either going to serve you mm. or it's going to wreak havoc. And I mean, it's going to be cataclysmic. And, and I was thinking about that today, about, about the truth and, and why it, it hurts, you know, mm. because, well, people would rather, I think, people would rather lie mm. to some degree mm. than own up and espouse the truth. Mm. Uh, and I think it's, it's dangerous to tell the truth. Mm. Yeah. And I think it hurts because no one really wants to be betrayed. Mm. Right. That's why, that's why betrayal is, um, um, it's the seventh layer of hell mm. in Dante's Inferno. Mm, yeah, familiar. So it's, and I mean, these, and these are sort of foundational values, mm. right? The mm. truth has been erected as this edifice. Uh, and, and Nietzsche remarked, uh, I think, quite markedly and profoundly on something here about the Catholic Church in that. They sought out the truth to the degree that they completely disseminated uh, their, well, their hierarchical structure. Mm. That was the collapse of the church. They sought out the truth to the utmost degree that they completely collapsed themselves, mm. which, you know, the result may have been the Enlightenment, you know, mm. some 500 years ago or whatever. And... Uh, it's just an interesting perspective on truth. Yeah. Yeah. And we like, and that's where all this stuff about like safe spaces and like trigger warnings and all this type of stuff came in because the whole, the whole like um, fantasy artifice that has been built up in our society, it, it's needs to protect itself. It, this right. fantasy land needs to protect itself, and that's why they started bringing in safe spaces and trigger warnings because they didn't want anyone just just plainly saying like the emperor has no yeah. clothes. Like what you guys are right. saying and doing is fucking crazy. Like it's fucking nuts, and and they didn't yeah. want anybody saying that, so they kind of demonized that type of speech. And that's what's happening now right. where it's like it's really coming to a head now in our society. It's absolutely mm -hmm. bizarre where it's like everything, everything is racist. Everything is sexist. Everything is hate speech. It's like yeah. anything done or said that is at all deviating from the mainstream fucking woke, crazy fucking narrative is considered like some some type of hate speech. And it's getting to the point now, I think, where even like your everyday person is beginning to think like, wow, this is pretty fucked up. Like th this is getting really fucking stupid. That's what I see. Yeah. I mean, I think too is that these – the small minority that's vastly becoming a large majority, I think. Mm -hmm. It's fortunate – turn of events um, and it's all circumstantial to some degree I think but one thing that plagues this whole ideology and, and one thing that plagues these ideologues mm. for example is they make impositions on in, on people on society mm. and they refute what some would deem irrefutable axioms, they mm -hmm. disregard and dispense with certain aspects because it doesn't fit their narratives. Yeah. And they want that to be tantamount to everything. But yeah. <laughs> in doing so, they create this, well, I mean, let's go with a communist perspective, right? Mm-hmm. They they want an equal equal playing ground 
where everyone's the same. Mm -hmm. Even though the Christians figured this one out thousands of years ago by saying everyone's equal before God. Yeah, that's fine. Right? That's fine. And they were the first religion and and first, well, we'll, for all intents and purposes, call it the first ideology Mm -hmm. to to create everyone being equal before God. Yeah. The communists had that same goal. Mm -hmm. But anyone who was different from them mm. got absolutely decimated. Yeah. So if you're inferior, I mean, the Nazis had the same idea. And, and I mean, this ties in nice to the historical mm-hmm. perspective that mm-hmm. we're going to discuss, I, I think. Um, but what's, you know, what's underlying that? Mm. Like, what's underlying this historical need to disseminate substructures? And, I mean, these prominent pillars of Mm. society, these archetypal, and, yeah, you know, albeit they can be quite misconstrued to some degree and and do dispossess people, but that's an unfortunate axiom of any hierarchical system. Mm. But what's driving that? I mean, mm. is it the need for power mm. and to conquer? Mm. And and it does make sense, excuse me, from a historical perspective, mm. to view what we adhere to in the pursuit of meaning um, as a as a power seeking creature mm. because mm. that's what a lot of the great, uh, well, a lot of the great people throughout history did mm. was they, they conquered, they obtained power, you know, obsessive amounts mm. and, you know, but you know, what, like, what do you think about that? Well, yeah, yeah. It's funny too, because like even the communists, systems like while they were originally built or the idea was for the workers of the world to unite in like a brotherhood so they sort of had it kind of made sense to a degree with what they were saying because also that was coming out of a period where there was basically like what was known as like serfdom in russia where it was basically slavery you you basically was like indentured servitude you were tied to the land you were not equal under god there were those who were who were superior who were a certain class and there were those who were inferior who were another class and this was built into the religion this was built into their understanding of god and so like the communists had these i from what i understand of things the communists had these ideas uh, Lenin and two, all these guys, they had this idea of like, let's overthrow this structure. Let's yeah. overthrow this religious structure and create a situation where we take all the resources and share them amongst all these slaves, basically. And so the people, the Russian people, where communism really took root, they yeah. were willing to entertain these ideas. Because yeah. they were coming from a place of of enslavement, so That's they true. and they had no rights and they they had no voice, and so this finally looked like an opportunity to totally dispel the mm-hmm. the czarist regime. Yeah. And mind you, this was also taking place during World War One when there was yeah. all kinds of casualties. So the Russian people were kind of almost in uproar and had a revolution at the front almost. So all this happened, but soon after that, fucking Stalin, Joseph Stalin and those guys, they basically took over and just were after power. Yeah. And that's that's what ended up happening. All they wanted was to conquer as much land as they as much shit as they could and incorporate it into the into the communist empire and they wanted worldwide revolution and who the fuck do you think was going to be in charge? They were. So yeah, it was again exactly. just power and the search yeah. for more power and more conquering. Right. Yeah, and so and so I think 
you can observe the transformation of existential misery mm. into the outright hell, mm. betrayal, mm. and deceit. Mm. See, they, they, you're right. So they took, they took the people's cry for help. Mm. They amalgamated this catalyst of revolution. Mm. They ascribed all of these, you know, pejorative and denigrating or attenuating uh, terms to the Tsarist regime. Mm. Um, and I think that started in the 1800s initially. I think there were rumblings of it in like the late 1800s. I, I, perhaps Lenin and some of those guys yeah. and Trotsky, I think. I, I think yeah. they started coming up with those ideas and it yeah. really took root um, towards the end of the First World War. Yeah. And that's when actually it was the Germans who sealed Lenin up in a boxcar and sent him back to yeah. Russia like a like a fucking disease because they knew as soon as he got there he would spark revolution and revolt yeah. which is exactly what happened and the disease right. just took root and they cut a deal with germany and ended that war yeah well that's it right and i mean they so they started to expose the lies because obviously i think an axiom that's imbued and entrenched in the very soul of uh, of the Russian uh, <laughs> just of the Russian spirit mm. is propaganda. Ha! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're good at it. Oh, they're great. Yeah, and uh, I think what they did by exposing those lies mm. um, first, they can sort of confounded the populace, right? It was mass confusion. It was like, well, I'm living like this. I didn't quite comprehend or understand, you know, this was, you know, quite the extent, except for the people who were living in those improvised, um, laden, uh, wrought iron chains, mm. who knew they were slaves, mm -hmm. who knew, you know, with the ongoings of serfdom and such. Mm -hmm. They so they took the spark of divinity, right, mm. from a Christian ethic mm. and wanted to make everyone equal. Mm. Mm. But in the Communist Manifesto, uh, Marx proclaims and professes, and quite vehemently, that in order for communism to work, there has to be a partisan class divide. And one has to decimate the other. Hmm. There has to be a class. Hmm. The, the proletariat and the bourgeoisie must go to war. One mm -hmm. must be eradicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, where you get away from your multivalent caste system, hmm. and then you bring in that partisan duality where it's one class is superior hmm. and the other is inferior. You get you breathe this malignant, pernicious air, mm. and they, I mean, they punched it. Mm. They hit the nail on the head. I'm like, good job. You wanted to, you wanted to enact the most satanic principle of life. Mm. Well, they they took on the judge of being, mm. right? They took on the judge of being, and they decided for themselves because of, you know, where someone may have been born or, or what they were born into. Mm. You're a appalling, wretched human being. Yeah. Even if you've earned your place, mm. you've got your little private land, mm -hmm. and, and now you're, you're, yeah, you're disgusting. That's, that's so funny and because they inherently needed there to be a class struggle in order for their yeah. revolution to happen. And it's so funny, yeah. you're seeing that now again today with this type of desperate need for an enemy. And yeah. and, and yeah. A, a lot of it is you are just an enemy 
not based upon anything that you've done or or said or anything you are. It's just based upon you happen to be born into a family that has conservative political views. You just happen to be born into a skin that's white. You just happen to be born into um, a certain kind of, even just being like Christian these days yeah. is enough to make you fucking the enemy. And, and, and it's like, this same fucked up kind of a communist system is is coming yep. back alive now today. It's so wild. It's so crazy. Well, and I mean to to touch on that a bit, I I, I just have to think about this for a sec because there's a lot yeah. sort of jumping around in my head. But oftentimes. I think about the difficulties intrinsic to life. Mm. Okay. I and this is why I solely believe in the sovereignty of the individual. Mm. And I just want to make this clear because there's supposedly this um, new age sporadic definition that's arisen about uh, sovereign individual mm. and these people go around and, and they don't have passports they jump borders and they're i think i've like, heard of that oh, i am i'm a sovereign citizen of the world and all this i am not talking about that mm -hmm, okay yeah i don't even really know what that is yeah to me it's nonsensical to the utmost degree of exactitude yeah i've heard that about that i think yeah you need a passport yeah for sure yeah it's special yeah get it <laughs> yeah Get a fucking passport. Yeah, um, but so the so those intrinsic difficulties to life, they're sufficient enough to denigrate us, right? They overwhelm us. They push us beyond our limits. They break us, and they they embroil us in this internal war. And and they and that embroilment that breaks us down to our weakest point. Mm -hmm. And so the unfortunate uh, circumstance is that not even living the best life mm -hmm. that you can live, right, as in an expedient life. Mm -hmm. Um, can countervail mm. those things. Mm. Like you, you could be do you know the pursuit of happiness. You could mm. be expedient and short-sighted, but then you start to understand that, that that figure of being, that avatar that you've now enacted. I mean, it's not necessarily taboo, but it starts to become taboo. I think to you once you realize it on the other side of, you know, after the fact, you know, mm. I think a lot of people forlorn for meaning and they're, and they're not finding it because they've again, sort of submitted themselves to this weakened state mm. and this, the persona, right. Of, I, I would say, primal temptation mm. even though it's fairly new age technology that's really you know creating this but the reason why I, I think it's primal temptation for example is because the hypothalamic functions right the ones that are sort of uh, see food eat pleasure you know see naked woman fuck mm. you know so on and so forth, they, they're just so overwhelming and the tendrils are so vast and they outweigh the prefrontal cortex and they create this, you know, again, the short-sighted thing mm -hmm. that wants to not accept the fact that they're, they're flawed. Mm, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. They're, they're vulnerable. They're weak. Mm. 
Yeah. You know? yeah and we They're... are we are like inherently vulnerable and weak because we're human beings. We're living on a planet with it that changes temperature. It's freezing cold. It gets hot. There's ti- li- there's fucking lions and tigers and yeah. you know there's snakes. There's there's other tribes that can come over with their spears like you can fall off a cliff like there's all kinds of inherent dangers and the whole point is we have to make ourselves stronger more secure and that's what we do we become stronger by facing challenges we develop relationships with other people so we can learn so we can create tribe and become more powerful and that's part of what is so insane about the new like i don't even know what you call it now the like fucking woke shit or like the social justice warrior type insane shit that's going on i i don't even know what the good name for is now it's just completely fucked it's like this mainstream insanity um part of what's so dangerous about that is like they're like ultra resistant Mm -hmm. to becoming stronger like they're they're so resistant to any type of like criticism or any type of like 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 thoughtful um like constructive can can, like um insight or criticism to them they can't even face anything so they just keep becoming weaker and they keep becoming more of a victim more of a victim and they just alienate themselves from anyone else who would want to fucking spend time with them like it's like when you hear someone say that type of talk, like these fucked ways that people talk now, yeah. like you don't want anything to do with them. I don't want that crazy fucking shit. I'd rather them have COVID. I don't give a fuck about COVID. I'm more worried about these this insane way of behaving. Get that shit away. That's a fucking disease. Man, you've, you've hit the nail on the head with that. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> I think that this is the most egregious, uh, reprehensible thing that could have ever happened Mm. um, Mm. preceding Mm. preceding the uh, the 20th century. Yeah, yeah. It's so weird, yeah. Well, I think a lot of the ramifications that we're seeing are still a result of it. Mm. And there seems to be this very... Um, misconstrued uh, surplus of compassion that's mm. arising. Mm. And I don't buy that the fact that there's that many compassionate people. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I sincerely don't. Because yeah. I'm, and it could be me perhaps being willingly blind, but listen, I've got, I have the capacity to think this through to some degree Mm. and I am not, I'm not that compassionate. Mm. I'm compassionate about the things like what we're doing now. Yeah. And I have compassion towards a very, um, you know, tight knit aspects of my life. Yeah. you know, right now I'm, I've got a new job, right? And I'm compassionate about that. I'm enjoying it because it's, you know, that dramatization of Josh at work, that is a, another level. That's another thing to strive and obtain meaning in. It's giving me something to do and learn. Mm. Mm. But when someone comes to me, with these um, loaded questions, yeah. right? And they have this this inkling of absurdity, and I, I think it's superfluous, right? It's completely unnecessary. But they come with these loaded questions. Mm. They're ideologically yeah. buttressed. Um, they're absurd. Mm. There's there's an intimation of insanity. Mm-hmm. Or, Mania. Mm-hmm. And, and what I think we're seeing, uh, and then I think you spoke about this um, in uh, Man and His Symbols, was 
there will, at some point as a result, because I think he wrote this in 1941, mm -hmm. and he projected or foresaw, had an auspice, so to speak, mm -hmm. of this world uh, wrapped in a dreamlike fantasy of, about the nature of evil. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that was going to be this neurosis. Mm. You know, I'm mass neurosis, a collective. Mm. It's in the collective unconscious. Mm -hmm. And and I think what people have done is, you know, they've seen the wretched terror, terror of life. Mm. And, you know, like just some time ago, not us specifically, but those things got passed down because this is what we want to avoid again. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, war, and so, yeah, everything. Right. And so they, but now I think people actually feign that existence. They think there's no way this is possible. And, and, and then again, to, you know, to sort of come back to your point about people not wanting to have their ideas mm -hmm. refuted mm -hmm. or, you know, tread it upon mm -hmm. it makes sense from a psychological perspective and it goes to show that we have norms mm. right or expectations and and the expectation is well i'm right mm. and everyone else is wrong mm. but you, you can't actually live a full life if you're obdurate and persistently wrong mm -hmm. because you won't have other people's opinions to actually hold some weight mm -hmm. So, yeah, 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 no, it's true. It's, it's like, if, if you want to become a good martial artist, you need to compete against other good martial artists. Like you, you don't, you don't want someone just, just fucking, you know, just like placating you, just like telling you you're good if you're really not like, that's really dangerous, you know? And it's like. Some, somehow we've forgotten that. It's like we think that telling someone like, you know, they can just be like a hysterical victim their whole life and be yep. outraged and that they deserve all kinds of special treatment and stuff. Somehow we've confused things and we, we believe that we're doing them a favor. Where it's like, in fact, we're setting them up for like absolute certain failure. <laughs> well, certainly, right? And uh, I think something else that has an integral role into this, uh, you know, is our preconceived notions about, uh, well, I think society, for example. Mm. You know, I think a lot of it's ill-conceived and we're misconstruing what, society actually brings to the table you know what's the purpose of a society mm. we're meant to function as individuals well then people are like well no we're meant to function as a group and 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 yeah it's true to mm. some degree on both sides but if you have you know everyone's mind melded into one <laughs> then you're never going to have you know, I think you're going to have a degeneration. I think you're going to have an ever deepening hell and a rejection of uh, of novelty and new ideas because mm. someone somewhere and in some way is going to find a way to create some chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. No, there, there is, there's going to be these moments when a paradigm shifts and you, you, yes. you can't, you can't just like sanitize things so that there is no paradigm shift. It's like in the nineties, uh, early nineties, when there was a lot of those hair metal bands, there was like, yeah. like, you know, Motley Crue and like Van Halen and all these bands were just like these, like these, like singing. Nothing against some of those. I, I liked a lot of Motley Crue. Got some good songs. They're cool, but they were doing this arena like hair metal rock, like these giant arena rock. And then uh, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana 
and Pearl Jam came around in, in the in the early '90s up in Seattle. They were kind of isolated up there, yeah. and they just came out with this new sound that just decimated everything before it and ended that era almost overnight. Yeah, and well, and exactly. you, you can't you can't just like you can't just like shame that into not happening. You can't just fucking shame Kurt Cobain. Shame on you, Kurt Cobain, with your fucking long, messy hair and your plaid shirt. Shame on you and stop singing those melodramatic songs. You're mean. You're mean, yeah. Kurt Cobain. Now stop it. Yeah. And you, you can't do that. Everything. Yeah. And it's just going to happen well, anyway. And, and I mean, look at Pantera. Yeah, yeah. Pantera... I mean, they created like fucking waves, mm. you know, and 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 they sort of emerged in the I think the early '80s, okay, or late '80s, and mm -hmm. then came onto the big screen in the early '90s, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, come on, you know, they like they created something mm -hmm. uh, just That's awe inspiring. I mean, I, I'm I'm. I'm a metalhead. I really yeah, yeah. Like totally. And the, my point is just that, like, so, the art and like something new is gonna find a way, and you you can't just yeah. like shame it down. Like you, you know, you you can't just shame heavy metal down because it's it's something that needs to get expressed. And so yeah. Anyway, those yeah, those are some good yeah. ideas there. Yeah. So, I think what one. One thing that uh, I wanted to touch on, mm -hmm. we still have we still have time. Oh yeah, yeah, we're just only about an hour in, so cool. Oh man, Jesus. Yeah, well, we can keep going a bit. We've so covered a lot, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll keep going a bit. We got a few more ideas, I think. Yeah. So I, I had posed a few questions mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, let's uh, go over those. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this stemmed from a conversation that I had with someone on uh, on social media. Yeah. And uh, we we were sort of speaking about fear. The, the original question arose about fear of death. Mm -hmm. And so I had asked uh, him. I, I think it's him. I don't know. I'm assuming that's my white male privilege. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But I, <laughs> but I had asked him about um, if we could maintain our humanity if we lived in perpetual fear. Mm. And he sort of deflected slightly and didn't answer the, the question in, in perspective or in context to the question. But um, I said to him, I messaged him and I said that I was intrigued to hear more about his perspective. Um, and I addressed what he said uh, in the messages. And so I asked him if, you know, do we adhere, for example, to this overarching need to conquer, which is what the, that's sort of the path we traversed on this. And, you know, I don't know how my original question got to this, but, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he said, you know, do we adhere to this overarching need to conquer, which I said historically makes sense. To some degree it's irrefutable, but I think the need to conquer stems from something more, mm -hmm. uh, just the need to conquer, you know, resources, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then I asked him if he believed we were merely societal creatures as well. Mm. And he said yes. And then he said something along the lines of the reason why we want to conquer is because everyone has a nature and everyone's nature is different. And, okay, yeah, fair enough. Mm. Uh, but the one thing that struck me uh, was whether or not conquest can actually be analogous to our nature and our own preconceived notions. Um, and because when we interpret something to be good and worthy, worth obtaining, does that truly mean that that's an attempt to conquer or control? 
Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, well, just that very last point there, I guess I can hit on that. Just because we love something and we admire something, is that an attempt to control? I think that's a tedious position to be in because you I think it can be for people like a yeah. grasping like I have to control this thing like I love this art so much I have to have it like I love this painting so much like I need to own it and store it away in my basement yeah. and I think there is a danger of that and there is there is actually truth to that but, um, and I think that's more the challenge of to say like, no, like I simply love this painting simply because it exists. And it's kind of like holding that space for like the flower to bloom without yeah. crushing it. And that, that is kind of hard to do. That's, that's true. I, I agree. And I think, well, you know, and, and when you're, when you're taking that into consideration as well. When, when you've got, you know, when you've got something precious to you, when you've got something that uh, you think is important, and that, like it's worth striving for, it's worth mm -hmm. attaining for. Um, and there's something underlying that, that is just so, it's so profound because we, when we want something, and it's worth working for. Mm. There's an element of sacrifice that you have to make mm. in order to obtain it. But again, I, I think it's a flagrant I idea to assume that we're trying to conquer that. And, and the reason being is because when I, when I see that language, when I think of conquering and I think of, um, you know, conquests, so to speak, I see a, a treacherous, uh, tragedy ridden sort of abysmal approach to decimating something to take it. Mm. Right. Mm. And so I don't, I don't believe that we can ascribe that to our nature mm. i don't think it's in our nature to destroy all of the time mm. to get what we want mm. Mm. so and i think we need some respite respite from that mm. i think a lot of what's happening now especially is they've used again the call to revolution as a way to countervail, right? They just want to destroy it because they don't want to hear somebody else's opinion. Mm. They don't want to hear, you know, someone might have a different view than them. Yeah. That's right? so weak. I, right. It's so I weak. Agree. Like that's such a pathetic, pathetic way to live yeah no, it's it just is. so it's so devoid of any type of meaning like it's just utterly just spineless and just you're just like a worm right and uh, and an invigiling misconstrued worm at that you know you have no sole purpose i, I mean nothing or and it's not to say you can't find it, but my God, you, you, you know, you try to seek reconciliation for something that, for what? I, I mean, what did you do in your life Yeah. to be, you know, that dead set against whatever it is that you're dead set against? And it's like, if you were like, you know, there's like, um, you know, if you know who, like a Charlemagne Charlemagne the Great, I think he was, yeah. I think he was the king of like France, kind of before it was France. Yeah. I think that's where he was. Yeah. And he, there were stories of him like 
deep into his old age, like still trying to learn how to read and write because it was like this new technology that was coming in reading and writing. And he wanted all of his children to learn to read and write and everyone in his court, he was like encouraging them to learn, but he was very old at this time. Yeah. But he still like day in and day out would get his tutor to come in and he was like still trying to like read these books and like write his name and stuff, even though it was, it was, that'd be like a senior citizen now trying to learn how to write coding on a computer or something is like so far out of this like league but it's like look man this guy wasn't above trying to challenge himself and no. trying to like trying to question his own understanding of things and here he was the king and, well, and it's like it. he was willing to humble himself and be like hey look like i don't know everything there's new things that i should learn there's different ways to do yeah. things because that's what life's about, man. It's trying to learn things and to admit you don't know things. And what the fuck else was he going to do? Sit in his court and drink wine and have like endless women come in and just eat cake and stuff? No, he wanted to challenge himself. Well, and I mean, and that, it, you know, there's a, you know, from a mythological perspective, there's a certain uh, masculine principle behind that. Mm. Uh, obviously, when you think of uh, the, was it uh, so in in the original uh, in the original text uh, when God was creating the earth in Genesis, I think this is a f- phenomenal uh, interplay, and it, it it says a lot about the profundity of the people that wrote, you know, say the Torah, um, you know, all the Old Testament and so on and so forth. These guys took uh, the chaotic element and the orderly element, much like the Taoists did, mm. right? They had the masculine feminine principles mm. and, and they realized that in their day to day life, they picked up on what things created a little bit of chaos, a little bit of novelty in their lives. Mm. And I think that in some way they managed to disseminate and encompass all of that into, into that, you know, that one book where they separated, I think it's the Wohu, Bobo or something like that. It's it's, it's chaos. It's the void, mm. and they created a, a countervailing sphere of order. Mm. But that was, you know, that was challenging, right? Mm. So they needed that spark of challenge, and and they've ascribed overcoming and and persevering and tenacity and prudence and all of these things uh, to the masculine principle. Mm. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that that has to necessarily just be ascribed to men. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the fall before God had excommunicated Adam and Eve, mm. you know, he said, I, I hope you're prepared to um, reap the rewards of thorns and thistles, basically. Mm, mm. Like you're going to work yourself to the bone day in, day out. Mm. And so you want to find meaning, well, you know, good luck. <laughs> mm. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, he... um. You know, yeah, it's true. Like the the challenge to face a challenge and to overcome things, that is kind of like more on the masculine trait, right? And and a lot of time the feminine is is can be like a yielding and can be like a, a kind of like offering kind of um kind of like caring to nurture and stuff. And and these are kind of two different ends of the spectrum and they're both they're both good like one is not 
really necessarily ever better than the other. They're like complementary. And no, that's 100%. yeah, like, and we all know that. And it's like the, the issue I think that has come up, especially in today's society is like, we don't appreciate in some way that masculine kind of overcoming and facing and, 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 and we've like, we've lost, we shame that it's so weird. And it is. it's so weird. It's like, we've gone, we've done really good in appreciating a lot of the feminine traits, like the, to be empathetic and to be nurturing. Like we've done good, a good job in these past couple of decades, especially because before that we didn't do as good of a job as that. And we kind of pushed that under the rug and we demeaned a lot of the feminine aspects, which was also unfair, but we've done such a good job and being like, Oh, Hey, those, these are really good traits. We have to encourage them. And we have done yeah. that. We did a lot of yeah. that. But the problem is we kind of went too far with that and we totally forgot yeah. like the masculine traits of like, hey, when something's fucking stupid, you yeah. need to be able to say it's fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sure. like, that's how you grow. And, and rather than do that, we made that like shameful. And we're we like, shh, 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 don't tell him his fucking, you know, don't, don't tell that guy his like retarded haircut is stupid. Yeah. And it's like what? Don't, yeah, don't. Yeah, I mean, I see. I can't quite. I can't seem to strike the nerve precisely on what we've fallen asunder to as mm. as a whole. Mm. Um, I find it a very arduous and erroneous and laborious subjects to, you know, dole over. Mm. And, and, and the reason that I think that is because it's, there's a, there's a necessity for a courageous individual, individuals even, mm. to come out, and say enough is enough. Yeah, yeah. And I think simultaneously, you know, us putting our perspective out there, um, it only takes the right influence or the right person, whether it's pejorative mm. or not, mm -hmm. to take that and make it expand. A hundred percent. Like it, it would only take like a Barack Obama. Or like an Oprah Winfrey, or or someone just to be like, hey, you know what, guys? Like fucking enough of this already. Like enough. You guys are just what? being bullies. You fucking woke idiots. You guys are just being bullies. Enough yeah. of this. You can't just yeah. sh don't just shame men all day long. Why are you yeah. fucking stupid? Stop it already. It would it would only take like a couple of those people, like Barack Obama, <laughs> Oprah Oprah Winfrey, like. A couple other people maybe could come could kind of come around and say that like, yeah. and it would it would it would kind of it would start to to move the the ball in the correct direction where we could start to make some progress. It's like, what good is this where we can't? And also, it's keeping it's keeping like the the men from from calling out other retarded shit. It's because most men, if they saw retarded shit happening, like where some guys like bossing a woman around or like clean that up, bitch. Like you belong in the fucking kitchen and blah, blah, blah. Like if, if <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if you, if you took away the shame, most guys would be like, Hey bro, like shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know, like shut up. Like the girl doesn't have yeah. to do what the fuck you say. What? Like don't be an idiot. And, and, and the mainstream, they like, they won't even hear that. Like they won't even acknowledge the value that like the masculine brings to the table. They're less like, bro, you need that. You yeah. fucking idiots desperately need that. Yeah. Well, and I think now more than ever, and I mean, there's, you know, there's a litany mm -hmm. of, of these people, you know, they prostrate themselves before these, you know, ideological compulsions and they mm -hmm. don't, they just don't hear. 
Mm. It's as if they're willingly blind. They don't understand the perilous environment that they're creating. Mm. And I mean, why would you drive someone with, you know, an authoritarian, tyrannical view, you know, underground? Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. When has that worked out? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, 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 yeah, you might not want to hear it, right? And it might be deplorable. It might be appalling. It might be wretched. It might mm. be satanic to the utmost. It might be prevaricating. And it's, you know, they're going to suffer more for it in the end yeah. than you are. So let them have their say. Yes. I mean, come on. Do does do you think besides people that advocate for uh, you know flagrant blatant racism, mm -hmm. do you think anybody truly wants to hear it? I mean, on open and honestly, probably not. No, nobody wants to hear you hate somebody because of the color of their skin or because they're a female. Yeah, we exactly. Get it. Exactly. I understand. Yeah, but I'm willing to entertain them in in the fact that in regards that I'll listen to what hear what they have to say because. The only way that we're going to ameliorate that or come to some consensus or capitulation, whatever the case may be, is to listen to them adequately. Yeah. You have to hear what they're saying and understand why. And, well, oh, I don't have to understand racism. Well, why don't you? Mm. And, and if you don't have to understand it, then why are you fighting it? Mm. Just disregard it. Dispense with it. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're totally right. There's like this like ultra minuscule proportion of people who really are taking that stuff seriously. And it's like, it's like, you don't just shame that person and block them and deplatform them on Twitter or some shit. You'd be like, oh, okay, what are these guys saying? It's like, oh, they're advocating like, you know, some type of like ultra racism or, or like segregating things based on religion or race or all this type of shit. And it's like, oh, okay, like, are you guys saying anything else useful, like anything useful? And there's like, no, we just think that we should have segregation and all this stuff. It's like, okay, like, right on. Is there many people who support this way of thinking? It's like, no, it's very, very small. It's a very small portion of people that believe this. It's like, okay, well, I guess we'll give you guys the amount of kind of attention that you warrant, which is very small. And it's like, all right, yeah. that's your guy's opinion. Right on. If more people start to think like that, maybe you're on to something. But right now, no one fucking cares. Most people think that's insane. And okay. And what we've done is like, rather than do that, what we've done is we've taken anyone who even remotely acknowledges that those people exist, yeah. we've painted them, them with the exact same brush as the yep. actual people who believe that. And it's it's so crazy that now you've got like the mainstream who think like 80% of people are like neo-Nazis. It's like, what oh, the fuck I mean, are you talking about? Like, uh, how yeah. did you get that? Like, I, so it's just, to, it's funny to some, to some degree. I, I mean, there was a point in time where I didn't really come to the forefront with many of my opinions. And I don't think it was, you know, lack of confidence in my opinion or lack of, it was probably lack of stability mm. uh, for the most part. I mean, you know, there was a vast megalomania that, you know, the soul of the lost man, you know, just maybe I didn't care. Mm. But when I came to realize that, hold on a second now. If I look at my personality traits, right, and I, and I understand them, and, you know, I understand them as I've started to study personality psychology and and I can see 
you know, set up before me, every interaction that I have with people, the underlying basis of that is set out to be these um, personality derivative factors. Mm. So everything that I say stems to some degree from this personality that I have. Mm. Our personality aligns maybe with a more conservative view, mm. not necessarily obstinate, steadfast, and, you know, uh, rigid. Like, mm. my, I do have certain rigidity. I think I've got mm. a very traditionalist perspective. Mm. You know, I'm, I believe in morals, for example. Yeah. I believe in values. Mm. And I think values are the lens with which we view the world. Mm. The value is the lens, yeah. And when I hear certain aspects of conservative policy, I think, well, yeah, I, uh, I don't disagree with that. I mean, mm. why shouldn't we tighten up the borders a bit, mm. instill a little more order? Mm. And then people are like, well, that's racist. <laughs> and I'm, but, well, I'm like, but racist towards who? I mean, you know, we don't really have a border issue, so tell me who I'm being racist towards. <laughs> well, uh, immigrants, I mean, yeah, like, they, there's a process. If I want to go to another country and live there, there's a process. Yeah. Do I think it should be a little bit, a bit more strict in certain countries? Sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's nothing to do with, well, I guess it is to some degree to do with the people that are immigrating. Mm. But it's not because I have an outright hatred for these people. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, yeah, and it's also like that's a strange issue too because it's like what you don't think that like what they don't think you care about the multitude of other racial groups that exist within your home country. Yeah. It's like you're yeah. you're also looking out for them. It's like mm -hmm. look, we already, you know, it's like say for example in Canada, it's like there already is like a huge it's already like an extremely diverse country, like extremely diverse. So, so if you, if someone's saying like, Hey, maybe we should like just be strict about who else we let in it, it, you're really looking out for the already extremely diverse group that's there. It's like, isn't exactly. that by definition, not a like racial issue at all. It's like, no, I'm looking out for the entire group, which is extremely yeah. diverse. It's, it's like, and they're like, you're but you're racist. It's like, <laughs> like what why why am i looking out for all these different people then like yeah sorry let me go clean up my hidden shrine to hitler I, I it's really bizarre we we've and it's really bizarre like and, and i myself like i want to be a liberal person like yeah. like i i really want to believe in a lot in in liberal ideas like i really want to but yeah. I, I and that's just kind of i have some proclivity to that right. but but i don't at all see any overlap between some of the ideas that i think are good that might be liberal ideas i don't right. see that at all in what's happening today in our society like it's not it's just we've gone so it's gone bananas out there and and I I would I I think like the the like conservative side of things mm -hmm. I think they've gained the moral high ground for like generations to come yeah. they they would have to like advocate like bringing back slavery or they they would have to advocate like starting some massive war in some random country yeah. in order to lose the moral high ground like the the left has gone so far their behavior is so appalling it's they're yeah. so mean they're so aggressive they're so they're such bullies that all the all the all the right side needs to do all the conservative sides need to do is just stand there and just be like okay you guys are just ruining your own your own whole movement and right. the the conservatives have inherited the moral high ground 
for like yeah. two generations to come just because of the appalling behavior of the left. That's what I see. I, I agree. Uh, and I think it's, I think that's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable claim. And I, I think, you know, we're treading on thin ice. Uh, I, and I think the unfortunate, uh, the, the, unf the unfortunate polemic that, you know, we could create, um, I think, yeah, the unfortunate circumstance of our opinion could be considered from today's standards to be something analogous to hate speech. <laughs> and, and look, I don't need some disheveled, peevish human being to make conjectures about how I'm actually thinking or feeling like, and, and the thing is, it's just so bizarre, man. It's well, we're in such a liminal state right now. I mean, it is liminal and, and it's transient. It's so bizarre, man. And, and the thing is, is my rudimentary claim, the thing underlying my whole philosophy Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been working diligently to create a philosophy of good and evil. Mm -hmm. I believe that these are two pre-cosmogon factors. Um, they're, they're pillars. We're the intermediary of those archaic primordial forces. We were created in chaos and order simultaneously with the abridgment of this. We breathe that. And, and to some degree, we prostrate ourselves before it because we have to submit to the devouring Leviathan of life. Mm. There's no escape from it. So we either hit it head on or we cower away and hide and, you know, become a hermit, but not in the, in the wisdom an awe-inspiring way. Mm. You become a recluse, a traglodyte, an mm. insipid fool, mm. uneducated. Mm. You, you you remain willingly blind and, and you know, um, uh, you become pre... You, the scales won't fall off of your eyes. Mm. And you won't have a tranquil spirit you won't have it. You won't be able to establish a direction. And and you're absolutely right. Um, you know, it's so obscure. Mm. And I think it's a bit of a, obtuse as well because you can't mean to tell me that there's no room for open dialogue and discussion. And and I, that's again, I think something that. It, a more conservative person advocates for mm. is that whole, you know, the freedom of speech, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's part of tradition mm -hmm. and we need it. Mm. Like, but also in regards to that is when, again, I didn't always come forth with my opinions because a lot of people, especially growing up and mm. hearing this mm. saying, well, this opinion is, um, well, it's not right. It's mm. inhumane. It's, mm. uh, I'm thinking, okay, but I actually, I kind of agree with, with this. Well, no, you, you shouldn't because yeah. it's not passionate. It's not nice. Who gives a shit if it's nice? Yeah. Yeah. I want to understand. Mm. If I have to be a bit provocative, mm. play the devil's advocate, if I have to mm -hmm. thrill you, I, I'm not doing this to undermine you. I'm trying to encourage thought. Mm. And, and that's even for myself. Mm. That's a hallmark of belief. You have to act, enact your beliefs. You can't just adhere to what you say. You have to enact it. And so does my dialectic, uh, you know, does that withstand the test of time? Does it withstand my everyday interactions with people? And if it does, 
then why should I have to sacrifice that so I don't hurt somebody's feelings? <laughs> you know? It's so bizarre. It's like, and we, and, and these like hysterical, like these woke idiots, like, they don't care who they hurt, you know? It's like, they don't care that they're shaming you into not speaking your mind. Yeah. It's like, it's like, what? It's like, so what? You're like, Josh's, his opinion doesn't matter? Like, his, his feelings don't matter? Yeah. Why? Because they're slightly different than yours? It's like, so, so you think, because he has a slightly different opinion than you, that you can just fucking shame him into shutting up it's like don't don't you think that's a bit maybe unhealthy for him don't you think that's a bit unfair that he should feel like he can't be honest about who he is like aren't you guys bullying him but they don't even give a shit at all like and and that's why i say like these fucking woke idiots like they have completely completely lost the moral high ground like they, what the way that they behave is so inherently mean, it's yeah. so like morally compromised and wrong. They just haphazardly fucking hurt people, discriminate so severely against people, yeah. and the problem is they act like what they're doing is fucking God's work. Yeah, and it's like they're horrible. It's like, look, man, say what you will about the fucking evils of the Nazi empire, which were fucking numerous and uh, just utterly devastating to the world in numerous different ways. They, the millions, the millions of people who died across many different ethnic groups, including their own was just appalling. Let's, there's no way to, it's just so huge, but look, man, you got to take into consideration. At least they were honest. At yeah. least they were honest. They said, we are going to take over all Europe. We are going to march into fucking Russia. We are going to exterminate everyone, anything yeah. in our path that stands in our way. We don't give a shit about what happens. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We don't give a fuck. At least and they were honest. At least they were honest about it. And then the other, the other countries at play could say, okay, we hear you. We're going to do what we can to stop you. And, and it's well, like, at yeah. least they were honest. And, and the thing, too, with, with that is, you know, it's, it's origin, right? The, the whole epoch of, of those regimes, you know, it emerged with these little lies, mm. right? It started with little lies, uh, you know, this, but you could see it underpinning uh, the, the whole substrate of the ideology itself sort of after the fact it, you know it started with these little lies like yeah oh, these there's this particular set of people mm. they're really bad for the economy yeah 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 and, like we're gonna just move them yeah yeah just move them yeah. <laughs> but but then mm. when things amped up uh, i forget what they call it i think they call it fire oh, or yeah the, the night uh the crystal knot yeah so I mean, there was no getting around it. I mean, they fucking burnt gas. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not gas. Sorry, but they um, like smashed they the windows. Jewish yeah. shops. Yeah, yeah. They mobbed yeah. them into the streets, yeah. beat the shit out of yeah. them, sent them on trains. Yeah. Gypsies. Yeah. What, you know, black people. Yeah. You know, if they happen, to, if there happen to be some black people in, uh, you know, pre World War Two Germany, yeah. I don't know how much. There actually was, but yeah, uh, I mean, they absolutely just uh, they abolished any lie, yeah, that they started on. And you're right, like they 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 told they said what they were going to do, and I mean, you know, Hitler wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, secretive about well, right. I used to own, like Germany, I guess, you know, the Prussian Empire. Yeah. I used to own a lot of Poland. Yeah. Oh, Poland. yeah. Lots. Tons. Yeah. It was like, I'm going to take Poland back. Yeah. Yeah. And and the world was, okay, 
he's just Fair he's enough. just reclaiming his old land. Yeah, yeah. Same thing towards France, right? Yep. Yeah. Part Alsace and Lorraine and parts of it. Yeah, they want to take it back. Yeah, because it they had right they had some claims to that stuff, so it was kind of fair enough in a way. And so, they didn't realize the extent of the military annexation. You know, they didn't realize it. Uh, you know, to the degree that it was happening. I mean, they like they rolled through Poland in a day. Oh yeah, pretty and quick. It was yeah. Gone. yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so, it's something to be. Uh, you know, that is an an indomitable goal-directed action that, uh, you know, I think if a lot of people, if you could find any light in a dark situation was look at what goal-directed action, truth, and meaning will get you. Hmm. I mean, obviously, they used that very sufficiently, but for the wrong yeah, for the for the wrong reasons, and for to create destruction and mayhem and suffering and right, it's like so you know. But at least they were honest about. At least they they said what they were doing. That's what that's why I find such it's so appalling. These fucking woke, fucking idiots. Like it's so it's like 1984, you know, because they they make it seem as if they are on the side of good. But, like, how could they be? Because all they do is hurt people. No, it's, it's like all, all they do is shame people and hurt people and ruin things and fucking smash things. And But yet well, they, they turn around and say they're on the side of good. Like, how, how well, is that? And, and, and what is the uh, Mephistelian intrigue? You know, everything... Everything will perish before me. It'll be remnants of a dark past. You know, Mephistopheles, for all intents and purposes, Satan, um, you know, said that humanity's a waste, the world's a waste, where, you know, it's a cancer, so let's just destroy it. And I think. I, I don't know how this interplays. I don't know if it's commensurate with with it, but I think they've taken these people that adhere to those very peculiar and somewhat precarious ideological backgrounds or backings have taken that compassion to the degree where they are almost enacting that same principle. Mm -hmm but with a slightly different twist where they're saying, you know, if you're not agreeing with this, then you should be destined. Yeah. 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 You know? And, uh, I mean, and fair enough, but that to me beckons and calls forth the eternal human proclivity for evil. And, you know, the world quickly transforms into chaos, and and mm. I think that is why, in particular, we need a low resolution, uh, overarching narrative, right? You know those universal laws, right? Those mm. natural laws, mm. they're axioms, they're irrefutable, and 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 the reason. We know that is because, as far as we know, they've existed since the dawn of human consciousness. And even before, I think. Even before, yeah. I mean, there's certain natural laws that we've mm. carried over from mm. our more animalistic uh, confreres, you know, our compatriots. And, right, I mean, they're, they're old. Like mm. hi hierarchical systems, mm. you know. Every animal. Mm. ranging from every even some single-celled organisms mm. have a hierarchical structure you can exhibit the behavior mm. I, I, it's just like the bigger one well there's a little guy sorry <laughs> you know mm. um and that 
I think is sacrosanct, but also I think to some degree, if I can dissolve this quickly, we have superseded our our lower cortical, you know, arrangements, right? Mm. We are not just the animals that we once were. Once were. We're the result of that animal plus mm. what we are now. Mm. But those tendencies, those drives are so deeply enshrined and deeply rooted that there's a confliction, right? We have to fight those drives. Mm. Because if not, I would say we wouldn't have a quarter of what we have now. Mm. Um, because, I mean, you know, for instance, the sovereignty of the individual has been granted a certain primacy of place. Mm. But what other creature do you know values the individual above the group? Mm. Right? Mm. Because there, there's no, there's none of this complex, intricate thinking with other animals. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's funny because, like, what does the, um, like, what does the lion, where does he view himself? Because I guess he's also responsible for the lionesses and the cubs. So even he really can't necessarily put himself as an individual above the group either, really, can he? No, because he, he's always got to think, well, fuck what's because even he is like boy i'd sure like to get a few more lionesses over here but he's like ah if i do it's going to disrupt things with the 10 i already have so i better not so even he thinks in terms of the group yeah and i mean you know i i don't mean to you know i i speak emphatically about the individual and i think that there's no escape uh, well, here's a good Buddhist perspective. Uh, you know, there's no escape from the limitation and suffering of life. Mm. So, okay, well, let's think about that for a second. If there's no escape from it, then what do we do? Do we lay down and die? Or do we voluntarily confront it? No. Given the juxtaposition of those two things, it's like, yeah, sometimes I could lay down and die. It's probably preferable than the perpetual and constant state of dismay that I, mm. that I feel, mm. you know, mm. like, it, you know, sometimes I feel exasperated and tired to the degree that mm. my, you know, my profundity, the, the, those nice sublime thoughts that I have, they become denigrated mm. and, it's hard to keep on top of it. So it's mm. like, why am I doing this? Mm. Well, I could take that nihilistic, that, that wretched nihilistic approach to life and say, well, life's meaningless. Mm. So I'm just going to lay down and die. Mm. Or I accept those tragic and appalling preconditions of existence and I move forward and I think the universal law of the sovereignty of the individual, mm. for example, is one of the best ways to ameliorate that, that whole dilemma. Mm. But just to tie in the ideological idiosyncrasies of a very particular sect of people, seem to think that overarching narratives and universal laws don't exist or shouldn't exist. Mm. But little do they know they slightly contradict themselves because they give every, everything up for the group. They become the mouthpiece of their ideology, yeah. which is still an overarching narrative. Yeah. But when you, when they start to hear things about the individual, mm. well, then they, they take flight. Yeah. 
Yeah, they don't like the individual at all. It's weird. It is strange. It's like you can be you can be different as long as you're different like them. But <laughs> like exactly. Like you, I mean that that right there. You saying that that I mean that was simplistic. That was on the point, and 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 that should enrapture people's souls. Yes, you can be different. But I want you to be different like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 How about instead of an incoherent cluster of people, Yeah. we bring our individual thoughts to the table. Mm. We disagree. Mm. We create that open line of communication. Mm. And we actually build a coherent a priori structure. Mm. Something tangible to build off of. Mm. You you've got some religious dogma. Um, you've got some nice uh, new age <sighs> law of attraction babble. I don't. <laughs> and you've got some psychological thinking. Well, you've got some nice grounded spiritual talk. Mm. Okay. Well, let's abridge that. Let's see what we can come up with. Mm. Let's see how we can ameliorate people's day-to-day suffering Mm. and and sometimes you just can't and that's fine yeah not everyone's going to get along no but you know it can either end there or you start a war (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah it's like and it's like not not everyone's going to get along and that's fine like i don't want to spend time with every person i meet the vast majority of people I meet, I'm like, oh, okay, right on, see ya. Like, I don't, there's no need for us to spend more time together. There's no need for, uh, there's nothing we're going to do together. So, so, okay, cool, see ya. I shouldn't have to spend, well, I, I shouldn't have to spend my time trying to fucking accommodate that person or trying no, to make them feel fucking equal or some crazy shit. No, that's it. I mean, there's disparities between people. There's disparities across the board. There's differences, and those things have to be taken into account. I'm not saying that we shouldn't speak amicably to people. We shouldn't be polite. Sure, for sure, for sure. But I'm telling you right now, if I'm confronted with someone that's being a prick and they're, you know, I don't know, shouting me down or shaming me, I'm not – like, you know, I believe in reciprocity, right? So I'm not going to be like, oh, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, fuck you. And, uh, you know, I might, it depends on the situation. Well, it's something. also like they're so hard to deal with. Like all those shaming people and all those woke people, like they're, they're so unpalatable. It's like, yeah. you, it's just, they're so unpalatable to be around that they can never get any constructive feedback because anyone who's productive and doing anything useful in their life, they're hearing this kind of crazy shit. Shame on you and blah, blah, blah. They're hearing that and you're just like, ugh. Like, yeah, whatever, man. Cool. See ya. Great. Bye. Like, I have to go over here now. You just don't. It's so repulsive to your soul that you yes. don't want to be anywhere near it. So the only people who will put up with that type of shit is other idiots just like you. So you get a ton of idiots all fucking cr- talking these crazy, crazy, crazy ideas. And they all just get around and natter that shit to each other. And they're confused to why other people won't listen. And then they call those other people fucking racist or whatever crazy shit they say now. It's insanity. It is. It is. And I mean, you know, we, we have a very particular vernacular of today. Um, and I, 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 I think, you know, one of the rudimentary things that I'd like to get across because, uh, you know, a lot of what I said, at least to me has been a bit incoherent because it's a, like I said, it's a very tough subject to wrap one's head around. Mm. Um, but I think. At the end of the day, mm. 
when you when you're considering the fact to to bring it back to this uh, canonical axiom of human beings of us being idiosyncratic, fallible, uh, vulnerable, uh, denigrated by our limitations. In the face of that, if you do not attempt to strive for something worth obtaining, if you don't attempt to find meaning, I mean, and it could be even something as subtle as this. Mm. Yeah, you know, it takes a little bit of effort and it takes time. And that's an unfortunate reality of, of existence. Mm. But if you, if you're, sole aim and your volition is to go out there and downplay and denigrate people mm. to the degree that you silence them. Mm. Uh, I think that those people that do that and partake and, you know, uh, have the audacity to do so, mm. um, are, are truly wretched and appalling human beings and need to take a step back and look and, and, and listen to these other people as if they have something worth saying. Right. I'm like, I'm willing to hear anyone out that has a different viewpoint and opinion. But I think if you're not striving towards it in a meaningful fashion and you're just doing it because it's been yeah. And hateful. I think you're you're taking you're you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't produce anything but chaos. Yeah, yeah. And um we'll we'll start to wrap up here soon because we're coming up on two hours. Uh so we'll yeah. we'll start to wrap up here. But yeah, no, I agree, man. Like it's like I'm fine to have like an interesting meaningful conversation like even what we're doing like we have like slightly different like i guess you could say like political views on things like but we're both coming at it from like a perspective of okay well how what can we how can we create some kind of value here how can we create some kind of progress and like yeah. overlapping ideas that can come to some more useful truth of things and like it, I, don't, I don't care where a person is coming from, what type of political idea, what type of fucking religious or race or fucking sexual or gender, any of that type of shit. It doesn't matter. As long as you're behaving in a way that's like coherent and, and right. can, can be like constructive and useful to others, that's like that's the ultimate – equal equality right there that's all i'm interested in that's all i care about and like neither one of us have any type of like that we would think to exclude someone from this type of discussion based on some fucking meaningless shit like their fucking gender or their racial background or their religious background like we wouldn't even think to do that and no. That to me, that's equality. That that's what it should should always have been. I think that's what Abraham Lincoln wanted. That's what fucking Nelson Mandela wanted. That's what Martin Luther King wanted. That's what they were all talking about, and that's what we're talking about. And somehow the fucking woke idiots would somehow label us fucking mean or some shit. It's wild, man. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's irrefutable. I think mm. I hundred percent in agreement. And there's an, it's an undeniable glimpse of the ambiguity and uncertainty um, and, and I, I believe the unfounded way of our world, at least to some degree. But there's a diffuse light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we're seeing a lot of backlash against it. Mm -hmm. um, however, <laughs> that's going to lead to something catastrophic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I guess take this as an auspice or a, you know, a slight foreboding for the future. But I think 
that there is going to be something catastrophic as a result of what I deem schoolyard behavior. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good right. way to put it. It's it's really petty. It really is. petty. It's really, really bullying. It's like very base. It's like people who were unpopular in school and never like developed any further than that. It's like now it's their chance to bully others like they were bullied. And that's that's it's like what the hell? That's what you guys are doing? Like, that's the vibe. It's like, it's those people who are now bullying online and like, they're now bullying people in Paul. It's like, it's so petty and juvenile and pathetic, yeah. but somehow it's like latched itself onto like the, the wow. mainstream narrative yeah. of our actual civilization. It's, it's just, utter insanity and and i think that there's a lot of people who are craving like some competent fucking adult to just come in and just smack the whole thing around and be like just shut up stop with this insane like john wayne needs to ride on in and just grab a hold yeah. of some fucking pencil neck twerp and just smack him around just like listen here shut the fuck up and just get your splash some water in his face and just get your shit together get a hold of yourself yeah yeah you're looking <laughs> for the father figure yeah you yeah, like like uh, you know like uh fuck man like humphrey bogart needs to come in and just just fucking sit you down and smack you on yeah. the back of the head and just shut the fuck up all right stop with this crazy shit hysterical shit all the time are you nuts Trump's not that bad. Relax. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesus, you know, I, I mean, these things virtually and, and well, I mean, not even virtually, they truly just destroy us. They denigrate the spark of divinity, the humanity. They, I just can't fathom it. I just, mm. I can't, I can't get it because Oftentimes, I enjoy I enjoy these conversations because, mm. look, if if someone disagrees with me, that's then fine. We can we can hatch that out. And we can talk about it. It's 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 pretty straightforward to me, and that's why I don't understand. You know, a lot to do with why there's such a vehement repudiation of different ideas because. I mean, especially in Canada, for example, I mean, we weren't necessarily founded on that diversity, but we have so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's innate intrinsic prejudices that, yeah, they seem trivial and mundane and they should just be overcome. But, you know, and this will probably be a point where people would say, well, you're just making up excuses for, <laughs> for it, but it's not so easily overcome as people think it is. Mm. You cannot just always set aside your prejudices. And that is, again, an animalistic part. We yeah. find comfort yeah. in our group. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good point, man. And that is just like a base level biological thing almost it's like generally speaking people from like similar backgrounds are generally speaking going to get along better that's just kind of a generality about things and that doesn't mean that they're that they're bad people that doesn't even mean that they're like xenophobic or racist or anything like that it's just it's you're always gonna find that even if you get like a bunch of people who like the montreal canadians are generally going to just get along better than someone who likes the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like you're always going to get these kind of things. And it's, that's okay. That's just part of the fun of life. Like it's not some like big serious thing where like every single person who likes the Montreal Canadians, they have to like the Toronto Maple Leafs fans too. And they all have to get along. It's like, dude, relax. Like we're not killing each other here. Just take it easy. It's all, you're gonna you're you're gonna eventually realize, hey, I'm being dumb. This guy who likes the Toronto Maple Leafs is pretty cool. What am I doing here? Let's come on, we can get along. Like, well, and I I think too, uh, you know, a bit of a, a grandiose uh, finale uh, finale here mm -hmm. 
it's, uh, well, everybody has to like me and accept my opinions and my ideas because I'm a human being and I deserve that. Do you? Do you really, man? Like, it's, I disagree. <laughs> and, and there, you know, the calamity continues. It's like, well, you can't disagree with that because that's how I feel. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't feel the same way. So if we're just going to base this whole uh, argument on feelings, yeah. I'm feeling quite mad that you feel that I have to feel like you're feeling. <laughs> you know? And like not everybody has to like you and that's fine. Like I don't like every person that I – like some people I like more than others. Some people I'm like, oh, you know, okay, fine. I can see maybe they have a different perspective, but I don't really – it's not a good use of my time just to, to hang out with them. What, whatever. It's fine. It's – not every – you don't need to be liked by everyone. It doesn't matter. It's – Well, I mean they just – they sort of um, – I, uh, I guess you could ascribe this to speech as well, but they sort of excerpt – things they take away you know they'll someone will listen to this and just take away what they want but the thing they should take away then we'll wrap up here in a minute and, and the thing that they should take away is as far as i'm concerned this is the way that actual human beings can engage together and make some type of progress whether they have similar ideas different ideas conflicting ideas like you and i don't have the same opinion on every single thing we see things differently in certain ways that's all fine this is the way that you can communicate with people that's productive and yeah. it's not you didn't we didn't figure everything out here we didn't solve everything here today in two hours we didn't solve we didn't even talk about every single thing we wanted to we didn't get it all nuanced it, it someone could go in here with a fine tooth comb and pick out well one time luke said this and it didn't quite line up with another thing josh said here and blah 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 it's like yeah. dude this is life man it's a messy thing like it, it's yeah. not a perfect instagram post you guys are no. fucking addicted to watching instagram it's perfect life ain't perfect okay yeah i mean you are to everyone watching mm -hmm. that will watch, I'm I'm tired, and you are going to find so many disparities in For the things sure, that I said. <laughs> of course, going to be discrepancies. Of course, there is, man, and that doesn't matter. Everybody, you could Jesus Christ Himself probably was on about shit, and then later fucking changed his mind. And was like, yeah, you know what? I don't know. That was maybe that wasn't the best thing it's ever. Dope. Everybody does it. Martin Luther King was not fucking perfect. And that's and it's easy to put someone on a pedestal. And that's what we do these days. We put people on a pedestal and then we drag them down. And it's like, we're not about that. We're about just being normal and real and cool. And someone who likes that, okay, cool. Come and add to this and spend time with it and get involved in whatever way. And if you're not into that, man, that's cool too. Go somewhere else. Yeah. I don't fucking care. Yeah. Go somewhere else. You're welcome to leave. If you don't yeah. like it, if at some point you watch this and you're like, well, I don't like what he said and it's mean, it's like, then just fucking turn it off, man. We ain't going to miss you. We ain't going to miss you at all. Fucking dislike it then. Go ahead and hit the dislike button. Even leave a mean comment if you really want to be a loser. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, we can delete you. I can delete you later. Yeah, exactly. But don't, don't censor speech. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And that's a little bit of a debate that I don't know. Cause in some ways I'm like, in some ways it's like, yeah, you should be able to let the, but in other ways it's like, well, I don't know. Like, do I really want you cluttering up my fucking space here? So I don't know. That's kind of a different, that's kind of a different point. But if it's like, it's like, why don't you like go make your own video about how mean Josh and I are. <laughs> Go make yeah. that. Josh and Luke are so mean. They're mean. It's like, go make your video about it and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think we did pretty good here. That's coming up just at two hours. So is there any final yeah. things you have or is that pretty much it here? No, I, I think that's it. Um, I think I'm going to go back and refine mm -hmm. and uh, sort of convolute a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, bring something more to the table next time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll come up with some new ideas, have some time to reflect and we can come back at a later date and maybe, uh, come in with a few new fresh perspectives, new ideas to deliberate on and we'll, we can go from there.
yeah it's got to replenish a bit yeah totally oh for sure it's all about that rest recovery yeah. okay all right man well it was a pleasure man thanks for coming on man i appreciate it and uh it's been good man like always i appreciate it thanks for having me on again um you know i i think there's inestimable worth here um and i i thoroughly enjoy these conversations yeah so yeah me too man let's get something rolling again soon i look forward to it man Cheers. okay see you man have a good